My first movie review is a film called O. O is an adaptation of Othello directed by Tim Blake Nelson and released in 2001. Did you ever think of what Othello would be like if Othello did cocaine? What if Hugo shot up with steroids? If you said yes, first guy like asked why, that is something oddly specific to be thinking of, but secondly, keep watching. This movie opened up to mixed reviews but successfully made a profit. At the Seattle Film Festival, it won the interestingly named Golden Space Needle Award for Best Director. It currently holds a 53 out of 100 on Metacritic and a 64% on RottenTomatoes.com. Let's move on to the meat of any good Shakespeare adaptation, the characters. The main character, Odin James, played by Mackie Pfeiffer, is a renamed version of Shakespeare's Othello. As soon as I heard this, I was confused on why they didn't just leave the name as it was. In modern times, Othello sounds just as ridiculous as Odin. However, I wonder how many times Odin would be asked today when he's returning to his next role in the new Thor movie. I own it, oh Cast you out! Odin James is a basketball player, and a superb one at that. Where Othello is an extraordinary tactician in general, Odin is amazing at basketball. I heard Asgard's basketball team is going all-state this year. Thor jokes aside, Odin's team, the Hawks, are attempting to win the championship, and it all rides on Odin. Odin is the only African-American in his private school, which mirrors his foreign ethnicity in the play. Next up is the Desdemona character, whose name is shortened to Desi in this version. Desi is played by Julia Stiles, who some may know from Dexter fame. She's the daughter of the school's dean. As in the play, Desi loves Odin, even though her father disapproves. She's completely loyal to him, even when Odin suspects unfaithfulness. Is that why you want me to talk to him? What? If you want to ask me if I'm cheating on you, go ahead, get some balls and ask! Hugo is the Iago character in this adaptation, played by Josh Harnett, and is just as conniving as in the source material. He begins to hate Odin after he designates this version's Cassio, Michael, as the other key player on the basketball team. This year's unanimous choice for most valuable player to Mr. Odin James. <laughs> Hugo naturally thinks that he should have that title, and vows to bring Odin down for it. One difference in this version is that Hugo's family is explained. Hugo is actually the son of the Duke character, the basketball coach played by Martin Sheen. Like, I'm not bitching a total frickin' rock star from Mars, and... No, not that Sheen, the other one. However, like Charlie Sheen, Duke does scream a lot. This version of the Duke also seems to have an incredible disdain for his son. Most times he seems to prefer Odin over Hugo. Other minor characters include Andre Keegan as Michael Cassio, Rain Phoenix as Emily, and Eldon Henson as Roger Rodriguez. This version's Rodrigo. Oh, Essentially, the conflict of the movie is all tied into the school's basketball team and the relationship between Odin and Desi. This brings up an interesting difference from the source material. In the play, Othello, Iago, and their associates are all officers in the military. In this film adaptation, they are players on a high school basketball team. In my opinion, this makes the conflict much less convincing. If Hugo was Odin's right-hand player, it wouldn't bring him any wealth or power. The only issue seems to be a shot to his ego, which he specifically blames on Odin. This also removes any sort of sympathy any viewer could have for Hugo, as being willing to kill multiple people for an ego boost is psychotic. Won't matter, Raj. Dizzy's dead. I'm sorry, bro. One of the only motivations other than Hugo's psychoses for his actions is explained during his internal monologue during the beginning of the movie. Hugo mentions wanting to fly. These words are almost always stated at the setting of a birdhouse structure filled with white doves and one hawk. The hawk appears later during games and pep rallies as it's the school mascot. It can be interpreted that the hawk represents either Hugo or Odin. It could be Odin as he being the only non-white student and having superior basketball skills than the rest of his colleagues. He's different than the doves. A case could also be made for Hugo. Hugo is trapped in a place with all doves. He thinks of himself as different and just wants to escape. Either way, it is interesting imagery, but doesn't give any sympathy to Hugo. I always wanted to live like a hawk. I know you're not supposed to be jealous of anything, but to take flight of everything and everyone. One of the things that struck me as weird in this movie was the very odd drug subplot. 
and at the beginning of the movie, it is revealed that Hugo has been taking steroids in order to improve his basketball performance. Later, towards the end of the movie, Odin also decides to try some cocaine in order to deal with this situation. This is incredibly out of place in this movie. It doesn't parallel with anything in the source material. Was it just to be edgy? Does it allude that Hugo's actions are due to intense roid rage? It is not only unnecessary, but also unclear. A scene that I felt could have come completely from the film was a pretty violent sex scene between Desi and Odin, which I will not show. It includes Desi screaming to stop while Odin gets more and more violent imagining Michael Cassio being in his place. It is a borderline rape scene. Don't even think about it unless you're ready to pull out some ID. As being set in a contemporary setting, the film borrows no dialogue from the source material. Phil French from the United Kingdom-based publication The Observer states, It is highly enjoyable and well acted, but the Iago figure is better motivated in the original play, no single line of which has been retained except for the odd echo. Emily will go on without it. Overall, the acting is pretty standard. Eldon Henson really stands out as Roger, and Mickey Pfeiffer handles the Odin character well. Josh Harnett as Hugo is believable at times, but as he spirals into the plot, his words and actions become less and less believable, especially when he resorts to murder later in the film. Both of these criticisms are stated by critics including film critic Emmanuel Levy, who states, Long on the shelf, O is well directed and decently acted, but its narratives, while more or less faithful to Shakespeare, try to do too much pushing the characters and their emotions to unreasonable and unconvincing extremes. Overall, in my opinion, this movie is forgettable. None of the performers act in a jaw-dropping manner, the newly formed subplots were gritty and unnecessary, and the conflicting characters are not 100% believable. I think Time Magazine's critic Richard Scheichel said it best when he wrote, On your already groaning Shakespeare for Teens video shelf, stack this one above 10 things I hate about you and quite a bit below Romeo plus Juliet. I give this movie two roid raging Hugos out of five.